Hey there, geometry. How are y'all doing? Um, I shouldn't have pushed record because I wasn't ready. Need to zoom in. We are in lesson four of unit seven, all about circles. Um, now we're going to talk about quadrilaterals and circles. Um, we talked about quadrilaterals a little bit last lesson, but now we're going to expand on that a little bit. So let's look at our first task statement. So for each quadrilateral, use a compass to see if you can draw a circle that passes through all four of the quadrilateral vertices. All right, I can't do that here, but I can, I think, insert some shapes. Hmm. It's really not a circle. Can we draw a circle that passes through all four? Okay. This is kind of fun. I think we got it. Pretty close, right? Check. All right, let's try it again. Okay, I don't like that. I want just a circle. I don't want it to be, okay. So that's a circle. Let's see if we can move it. Oh, I hit two of the corners. Hmm. I don't think so. Oh gosh, I just moved the paper. We don't want to move the paper. A little bit smaller, maybe? Looks pretty close. Huh. Okay, let's fix this one. Because that got a little wonky when I moved the paper. Okay. It's still a circle because I'm moving it symmetrically, like I'm doing a dilation. Cool. Let's try this one. Insert. Circle. Right there. All right. I'm going to stretch it and shrink it. Uh, this doesn't look so good. Hold on. I need to let the dog in. The dog has been let in. Okay, this one doesn't look so good. I'm not sure how there's any way that I can touch all of the... Hmm. Doesn't look so good. Is there another one? Oh, there's only three. All right. If you look at the professionals and how they drew um, their circles, you can see that for A and B, we did good, right? Good job. But for C, we did good. It's not possible, right? So that's okay. Um, it, there's just no way to make that circle um, touch all the vertices. All right, so let's go back to our lesson. So inscribed angles and circumscribed circles. Um, the images show three quadrilaterals with circum, uh, circumscribed circles. That means the circles on the outside, okay? Inscribed means the circles on the inside. Circumscribed means the circles on the outside. For each one, highlight the arc from S to Q. Let's get my drawing back up here. Draw highlighter. Highlight the arc from S to Q passing through P. You guys can do this also. S to Q passing through P. S to Q passing through P. That's hard to draw. Okay. Um, then find the measures of the arc you highlighted. So let's look at part A first. Okay, we're gonna do that in black. That's supposed to be a check. 
So find the measures of the arcs you highlighted. Sorry, I got distracted. So if we're find, trying to find the measurement of the arc, we know that this angle right here is 105, which means that the opposite arc is going to be twice that, which is 210 degrees. Okay, because it has this end point and this end point, and the angle is 105. Okay, now here, this arc has Q and S as endpoints, but the angle is 62, which means this is going to be 124 degrees. Oh, what happened to my highlight? I highlighted this, didn't I? I must have pushed the button. Um, we're doing, sorry, S to Q through P, S to Q through P. So we have this end point and that end point and that interior angle is 130. So this is going to be 260 degrees. All right. Now the other arc, let's do that in blue. It'd be like here, it's like the lesser arc. So 360 minus 210 is 150 degrees. Okay. Here, if we have 360 minus 124, 6, 3, 236 degrees. That should actually be that arrow is a stinky arrow. There we go. And then this last one. is 100 degrees. Okay, and now angle S P Q. S P Q. So this angle right here. S P Q. So that angle is going to be half the opposite. So 150 divided by 2 is 75 degrees. Okay? This is 236, so 236 divided by 2, 118. I think that's right. You can check me. If you were in the classroom with me, you'd check me and definitely tell me if I were wrong. All right, and then this one is going to be 100 divided by 2, which is 50 degrees. Okay, so we've proven, we've shown over and over again that the arc opposite an angle is twice. So if I have, uh, let's change colors. So this angle, the arc opposite is twice, is times two. Okay, this angle, the arc opposite that has the same endpoints as the angle. Okay. So the arc and the angle share endpoints, and the arc is times two, okay? So this angle, the arc opposite it is times two. And then we figured out the opposite angle, sorry, we figured out the other angle, the remaining angle, the remaining arc, the measurement of the remaining arc, we figured that out, and then we used that arc to find the angle measurement that were, was remaining, all right? So if I did that, can we use this to find the arc measurement and then half that to find the angle measurement, right? So we use this to find the arc measurement. Nope. We use that to find the arc measurement and then half that to find the angle measurement, right? So we use this to find the arc measurement, and then half that to find the angle measurement. 
here's another quadrilateral with a circumscribed circle. What is the value of A plus B? Sorry, alpha plus beta. Well, if we go up here and we look, I'm out of colors. If this is 75 and that's 105, it's 180. Ooh, that's a nice number. I don't like my pen choice. Let's check to see if that works. So 62 and 118. Ah, I don't know what I was writing there. This would be 180. That works. Now let's check 130 and 50. One eighty. So alpha plus beta, that means the opposite angles of a quadrilateral that is circumscribed. Now your circle has to be able to you have to be able to draw a circle around your quadrilateral. The opposite angles always sum to 180 degrees. Okay? Now what did we talk about? You have to be able to draw a circle around it. And then the angles that are opposite each other sum to 180. That means that this angle and this angle also sum to 180. We can call this angle one and angle two. Angle one plus angle two also sum to 180. That's an awesome eight. Oh, it's stuck. Why is that happening? That's weird. I don't know what I did. Oh no. All right, well, that's awkward. Very awkward. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. Let's just change colors. Weird. Um, these angles sum to 180. These angles sum to 180 because earlier I drew a circle around it. I don't know what I did. Huh, I hope that changes in the next one. Okay, these angles sum to 180 and these angles sum to 180 because I was able to draw a circle around that one. Okay, Oof. it doesn't work. Okay, nope, it doesn't work. Okay, this is an obtuse angle and this is an obtuse angle, so they won't sum to 180. This is an acute angle and this is an acute angle, so they won't sum to 180 either. This is awful. Okay, hold on a second. Let me see what I can do here. All right, I don't know how I got that to go away, but it went away. So let's look here. Quadrilateral ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral. Draw, draw diagonal BD. C. Got it. How will this diagonal relate to the circumscribed circle? Explain your reasoning. Well, um, I believe diagonal will cut the circle, hmm, maybe. I'm not really sure. Ooh, that's interesting. That yeah, looks circular. Let's see if I can put it on here. It looks as though it's the diameter. Pretty cool. Let's try this again. Look what I found. All right. We're going to try this one. Circle through three points. Select three points on the circle. Cool. One two, three. That was fun. Now let's do a segment. Um, BD, I think is what it wanted me to draw. Ooh, that's cool. Now it says the diagonal will be the diameter of the circle. Okay, I'm going to hide that again. Um, diagonal, explain your reasoning. Well, let's read it. The inscribed angle theorem tells us that angle BCD 
must measure half of the arc in which it's inscribed. Therefore, the arc going through B to D through A, this arc right here, B to D through A, must measure 180 degrees. Okay, let's write that down. Again, I can't, these drawings don't stay, but this arc is 180 degrees, and this arc is also 180 degrees. Okay, that's a diameter. Cool, I think we got it. So let's look at the next question. Construct the center of the circumcised Construct the center of the circumscribed circle for quadrilateral A, B, C, D, labeled as point O. Um, how would we construct the center? If that is diameter, I can find the midpoint of it. Move my head. I'm not sure which one of these will show me the midpoint. Nope. Let's try this one. Nope. Hmm. All right, I'm going to pause and look for it. All right, another way to find the midpoint of segment BD is the perpendicular bisector, which is that one right there. So let's use that. Select two points or one segment. So I've got a segment here. Oh, wait a minute. Nope. That's not right. Undo. Perpendicular bisector. Okay, so we'll just select two points. All right, so we got that. Now let's mark where it intersects. So we want this and that, and that's going to be part point O. I don't know if it's going to let me change the name. Nope. Okay, so we can't label it point O, so we're labeling it point E. All right, so I used a perpendicular bisector. That means that um, that found the exact center of segment BD. Next, construct the circumscribed circle for quadrilateral ABCD. Ooh, I already did. Okay, let's move my head again. All right, so we're going to start over, and that's okay. All right, perpendicular bisector. Okay, find where that intersects. Now we can actually do a circle with an endpoint. Center, okay, so we want the center and a point. Okay, we just did it in a backwards way, all right? I'm going to show you one more thing all the way back. So part A says draw a diagonal, which we did here. All right. We know that this is a line and it is 180 degrees. So this arc on this side will be 180 degrees and this arc on this side will be 180 degrees. What's also important to notice is this angle right here is 90 degrees, which means the arc opposite is going to be 180 degrees because it's double, we learned that, all right? So if I do a perpendicular bisector here and show where they intersect and then draw a circle through the center to an endpoint. Cool. I got distracted again. Okay, so I think we're good. Construct the circumcised circle, check. Could we follow this procedure to construct a circumscribed circle for any cyclic quadrilateral? Explain your reasoning. What's a cyclic quadrilateral? Okay, let's see. I'm gonna get back to that word and where it was introduced. Don't get dizzy, I'm moving sort of fast. Let's do this. <laughs> there we are, cyclic quadrilateral. 
So, if it's possible to draw a circumscri circumscribed circle for a quadrilateral, the figure is called a cyclic quadrilateral. Not all quadrilaterals have this property. So back to that question, yeah, okay, where are we? Could we follow this procedure to construct a circumscribed circle for any cyclic quadrilateral? Yes, okay. No. Oh. what? It only works when at least one angle of the quadrilateral measures 90 degrees. This allows us to draw a, di a diagonal, which is a diameter. Duh. All right, I hope my mistake helps you remember it. No is the answer. All right, let's go back to our lesson. Okay. Okay, one angle, oh my, angle must be 90. We're having issues today, 90 degrees, which means the diagonal will be the diameter. All right, if one angle is 90 degrees and it's circumscribed, okay, this is twice 90 degrees, which is 180 degrees. Drawings are beautiful, I know. All right, and it's doing it again. That's fantastic. Okay, oh gosh. Let's see if I can get rid of that. All right, let's look at this. Is this quadrilateral cyclical. Well, if I look at this A point, the distance from here to here and there to there and there to there and there to there are all equal. Does that remind you of anything? Do you notice anything? Well, if A were the center of a circle, A to D, A to E, A to F, A to C would all be the radius of the circle because they are equidistant from the center. So I'd be able to draw a circle around this. Absolutely, because these segments are all equidistant from the center, and that's the definition of a circle. So that works. I don't know how to get out of here. There we go. If I look at this one, okay, would I be able to draw a circle around this one? It's a little big, I know. I can't make it smaller. Okay, what do we notice about this? So each vertex of this quadrilateral represents a town. A construction company says it's planning to, hold, to build a shopping mall the same distance from each town. Claire claims this is impossible. How does she know? Okay, so this is a town. We're trying to, sorry, each vertex is a town. Like there's Bentonville, Rogers, Springdale, Fayetteville. We're trying to build a shopping center that's equidistant from each town, okay? So if we read here, if there were a point that was the same distance from all four town centers, then it would be possible to draw a circle centered at this point that passes through all four vertices, okay? The towns would form a cyclic quadrilateral. In that case, the opposite angles of the quadrilateral must be supplementary. They must add to 180. Okay, let's do this. Having one note problems right now, but if I do mm, supplementary means they add to one eighty, right? Okay, doesn't work. However, the opposite angles are not supplementary, so it can't be cyclic. That's what it says right there, all right? All right, so we're done for today, okay? So it's a good lesson, though. So.